go right into that. Let's bring Franklin in here. He's going to talk about his new movies. Hey, it's Franklin. Come in your house. Hey, it's Franklin. Uh, Franklin in here. Uh, Franklin, nice to see you, buddy. Hey, nice to see you guys. Um... We were bringing up earlier today about how you turn your back on all the great marketing ideas I had for you. You made a giant mistake. You listened to Dean. I would have to say I did. And from what I understand now from Dave, Dean uh, has jumped from, you said, smoking joints to being on the pipe. <laughs> smoking that glass dick. <laughs> I, Why would you listen to him? Yeah, they had some private time this weekend. Let me say this. You have a sense of style about you today, Franklin. Oh, Sometimes thank you. you're a very messy person. Not today. Today you have a sense of style. Yeah, I figured we had a lot of stuff to do, you know. <laughs> what, you just get dressed up pretty for us? Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, um, we talked about this, so you're going to break off with some of those people who gave you bad advice. <laughs> and the new movie, i I, I got to explain something to you. Talk to me. The movie business is about the hype. you got to sell that sizzle. Mm -hmm. Last time you made a fine movie, but you didn't have that one thing that you could sell it off of. Yeah, I, I kind of missed on the Moo Girls. Yeah, that would have been gigantic for you. Yeah. Now, there's, um, you know who, uh, they're running stuff like this now. It's like the Apatow has that kind of a grossed out fun thing that's blowing up for him. You could have been the new Apatow. Well, we still have time. We have mm. time. I ain't going anywhere. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're moving on to the next one. You're yes, not getting any yes. younger. This <laughs> one, well, not that, but this I'm one, just you know what? This one blew up on the pad. Mm -hmm. It blew up on the pad. Uh, and that happens with a lot of fine movies. Yeah. You've got to get that initial uh, push. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that you initial turn, push. turn your, you know. Why is, why, why avoid Ron Bennington? Here. Here. Is that what you were doing? Here, no. No, no, no. That was... Here, Joey, take your head. <laughs> By the way, I told, I told Franklin Ron's a dick. <laughs> Here, pass this down. Yeah. Uh, Wes, Wes and Austin, you're on my first. Hey, yeah, I wanted to talk to Franklin about the, uh, I saw the new Coen Brothers movie last night, A Serious Man. Mm. Um, wow, just in really, really amazing. Uh, it's <clears throat> totally, you can tell it's a movie that's so personal to them. It's, Here's it's what's just, interesting, Dave, I'm going to guess you haven't seen it yet? Not yet, no. Mm. It's been out for two weeks in New York. Uh, Serious Man, fine movie. And he came up with a good idea here, Franklin. You've got to write what you know. Mm hmm do you really know a cartoon cow that's going to come walking into people's lives? Yeah, I'm kind of. T uh, it's, I try not to talk about it, how personal that script actually is. But or is like, that something Dean sees? I, well, well I've had a lot of uh, a lot of past years of hallucinations. Let's say. Oh, Yo, you've had a lot of hallucinations. Oh my God, yeah, man. <laughs> my mind isn't exactly the same way other people's is. You know. What do you hallucinate and say? This surprises. Uh, well, I mean, I did a lot of acid back in the day. So yeah, like, me too, and I'm fucking fine. Yeah, well. <laughs> I've seen things, well, I've seen things recently. My most recent thing actually was odd because Gina saw it too. So I don't even know what to... What was it, a table? No, <laughs> That's not a hallucination, no, uh, Franklin. I wake up, right, because I had this feeling someone's watching me, right? And I look up above, I, mean, I feel like someone's watching me from above me, though, right? And I'm like, shit, that's weird. So I go was to... Was it another guy Dude. laying on top of you? Dude, honestly, I feel like that was, but I didn't feel any pressure, right? So I open my eyes and I feel something go to my left. And I'm like, what the hell? So I look and I see, I swear to God, it looked like a stretched out Benjamin Franklin, all in white. Like all white, his skin and clothes, same tone, everything, all right? Now I'm like, what the hell is this I'm seeing now this time, right? I touch Gina. I don't say nothing, all right? I touch her. She wakes up. She goes, eh, eh, what's the man? In, who's the man in white at the doorway? I look at her. I'm like, what the? And then it disappeared. So I see things, you know, I can't say if they're hallucinations or my did, just... Now, did she remember saying it the next day? Dude, I couldn't go to sleep all night, and she just went right back to bed, asked me in the morning, why didn't you go back to bed? So you freaked out with a white guy in your apartment? Dude, yeah, it was like white, not like skin white, like white like paper. Now, Fez, I remember you used to see a ghost in your apartment. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like what? Um, I saw like a, almost like a Civil War type guy. Yeah, mine was colonial, like Benjamin Franklin dress. Wow, what did he look like? Like skin or? He had a big long beard and kind of like a union uniform. Did you see colors? No. no. Well, no, I think the uniform was blue, but that was about it. There wasn't a lot of colors and he was gone really fast because I screamed. Wow. Did, could you see through him? I could see 
the like there's a little crack of light from the bathroom and I could see the crack of light through him, but I could couldn't see through him. You see, see what I mean? Like trying to No, he was almost. just the kind of standing there almost like standing guard at the doorway. Whoa. Yeah, that's intimidating. Mine seem curious about me. I, I hate to break you guys up. But oh, sorry. It's just, it's just stupid talk. <laughs> uh, here's Flea. Flea, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, guys. How's it going? Franklin, good to hear you again. Thanks, Flea. Franklin, I think I know a way you can get back to Dean. Uh, you can, you know, he always likes to go down the beach with his dog, so you could probably just throw him in the water and hope a shark eats him because, you know, you lost all the weight, but he hasn't yet. Oh, have you Slay, seen what are you week? fucking talking about? Why give the worst fucking call in history? <laughs> let's try to move this back into the sensible fucking place we were going. Yeah, let's go back to um, this. You got some movie ideas. Where are these up at? People if can you go to CypherProductions. Have you already put them up for us? Yes. Nobody put them up on our uh, things? Oh, no, what no. What I no. got to start doing, uh, Franklin, is have these guys have meetings, uh, production meetings, before the fucking show so they would be ready to go with this. Uh, instead, it's all about getting things all fucking track. If uh, the people at home want to go to pick a flick on www.cypherproductions.com, they can definitely uh, check out and read. So we go to the Cypher Productions, and then there's a pick a flick. Help us pick our next flick. All right, you did already. You've done last night in, in Brooklyn, right? Yes. I, I figured I have like 15 screenplays. Well, wow, uh, this is amazing. I didn't know this. Yeah, I took uh, you uh, got the a best well, eight. well, let me just look at this. You got a, a rave. From FoundryMusic.com movie reviews. Oh yes, yes, big time. Uh, that's up on your front page. Who gave you the uh, Who gave you the the heat for that? Who Who was the reviewer? It was Foundry Music Jeff who actually gave us that review. Wow, I had no idea. He does a lot of movie reviews, does he? Uh, he reviewed this one. <laughs> I don't know his past work. First movie he's seen. That's who I think of: Ebert, Siskel, and Jeff. <laughs> All right, now where do we go to help us pick our next flick? Basically, um, if you right, hit... let's go over some of these, mm -hmm. all right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you've got a bunch of ideas, and you don't know which one to produce. Yeah, I figured this is the eight best out of them all. Okay. And I wanted to give the audience the chance. I figure it works for PBS. Let's see what happens for us. Well, does it work for PBS? Well, they get on, they stay on, all right. and they have telethons. <laughs> all right, let's go to the first one. Awaken. Awaken. Oh, awaken. Awake. Is your dream life as real as your waking life? Many cultures across the world believe they are one and the same. For three young people, they find out it is when they begin traveling between worlds and are chased by spirits in search of a new body to inhabit. Can they figure out the secrets of the dream travel before they fade away? Or are they possessed and lose their souls? If you like waking life, you'll love this ripoff. Awaken. Well, written, written 11 years before it. Yeah, well, and that was a cartoon, right? <laughs> it's too yeah, late it now. Was. Now, here's it's an interesting thing. It's a premise, though. You no, say many totally cultures different. across the world believe they are one and the same. Yeah. What culture? The Aboriginal uh, culture believes that your dream life and your real life affect you the same way. Is there another one? Um, I definitely... The Belgians? The Sumerians. Mm. The Sumerians. So there's no kind of modern There's culture. no modern besides the uh, originally, no. People that will eat bugs. Yeah. <laughs> right, so bug eaters. What do you think of Awaken, Fez? It sounds like it's going to be like a tribal Freddy Krueger. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't care for it. I don't... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's go over here to Lost in... So that one, who cares? We got seven more to go. Yep. That, you like Awaken. That's my favorite because, of, you know, I personally believe that theory, but uh, it's kind of hard. Is that because you see... Uh, ghost. Well, you know, the way I look at it, it's like, I only know that you guys are around me because my brain is receiving electrical impulses. It's the same thing the way my dreams are at night. So I literally, if I could remember them better, I would be having the same experiences from life in, when I'm awake as I would from dreams. Could someone get arrested for rape in their dreams, in your opinion? Um, no. Should they? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Thank God. <laughs> There's already a movie, though, coming out, directed by uh, Christopher Nolan, I believe. I He's saw terrible. a trailer for that, actually. The, but Franklin is ten times the director he Really? Is. Then the guy who directed Memento. All right, here is Lost in Amsterdam, and this one's a comedy. Mm -hmm. A group of friends borrow money from an inept loan shark to fund their problematic event promotion company. When they lose the money, they are chased out of the country and end up lost in Amsterdam. The group finds out that they are the same problems they had at home, will follow them wherever they go. This is further complicated when the loan shark shows up. 
Can this group change themselves and work together in order to make back the money before they are caught? So you seeing this as a what? If you were like some movies that came before. Uh, this one. Let me see. If you take uh, a Pineapple Express, I guess, okay. and How High, those kind of vibes. So it's a Pineapple Express. Uh, so it's, it's a, a weed stoner movie. comedy. It's, it's a, stoner a stoner comedy. comedy. Yeah. Dave, stoner comedy. You ready for that? No, it's, it sounds more to me like a, a shittier version of Weekend at Bernie's without the corpse. It just you know friends, <laughs> Have you seen problems, that movie? loan sharking. I, I don't care for this. Fez lost in Amsterdam for you? No, to me it sounds like an excuse for Dean to keep getting high. <laughs> Would Dean start Dean this one again? Co -wrote, co wrote this one, so mm -hmm. you might be right. Yeah, you got any, production. You got any of the pages for that? I do, actually. The whole script is right here. You can see scripts and storyboards for uh, this one. Well, maybe what we'll do is later on in the show we'll have Fez and Dave act out some Oh, that'd be scenes. a lot of fun. Uh, I kind of like Lost in Amsterdam. Because it's going to be a little bit easier for you. I agree. And less of that Franklin heaviness and more regular guy stuff. This is my most real script without any spiritual or, you know, This is paranormal. more Hollywood, you're saying? Yeah. This is Hollywood friendly. Yeah. Very but this ready. isn't your favorite. You this, just said Awaken was Awaken's your favorite. Awaken's my favorite. But this well, is the one that will be that the this, most successful. This is one that's going to be good for for ham and eggers like yourself, knuckle draggers, you're going to get lost and awaken. But this, you can be like, oh, look, they're running from cops. I got it. Uh-oh, they're smoking pot out of an apple. And I'm more <laughs> like you could enjoy it. Right. I don't see it. It's Hollywood friendly, so it's ready to go. Be yep, bought by ready Hollywood. ready to go. Ready to go. And you're going to have to shoot on location? Yeah, we have to go to Amsterdam for this, but it's still much cheaper than a lot of the other ones. Uh, here if, is... I was going to say, is there an animated cow in this? No. You should have Moo make a cameo in each one. You know, that wouldn't be the worst idea. I would love to make Moo come through all the movies. All right, the next one is Haven. Mm -hmm. When all satellites are forced from the sky, you have to worry about it. Everyone else. What? <laughs> when all the satellites are forced from the sky, all you have to worry about it. Everyone else. Let's just say that we're going to fix that later. That should be his. Uh, a group of friends find themselves trying to flee New York City after a complete collapse of modern civilization. They travel the world of suffering refugees and unspeakable violence and until they hear about a town that is functioning properly. Haven. Will this town be a haven to these weary travelers? This script actually scares me. Because you're scared by your own script. I read it and I get uncomfortable. Mm, because was, of the misspelled words? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, that was embarrassing, sorry. But uh, I wrote this during a very dark time, like after my grandmother died and my uncle died like a week later. And I, like, a lot of anger came out of me into this script. Did they die because satellites hit them in the head? No. But uh, I, just, I was able to just ex take all of it out of me. So when I read this now, it's kind of like... Whew, is disturbing. I feel like this is another commercially successful script. Like people would really enjoy the gruesomeness of it. To tell you the truth, is the big fear in this movie the lack of cell service? Actually, everything. I've got no bars. There's nothing. There's no electricity. There's no running water. There's no services. There's no emergency. Like there's there's nobody. Everyone's for themselves. It seems like there's a theme here. There's a lot of fleeing in all these movies. Yeah. Right? Whether it's Amsterdam, New York, or the dream world. I never actually caught that until you just said that. A lot of people on the run. <laughs> I picture Haven, sort of a gay Mad Max. It sounds like you, that you're not going to have Hollywood backing. It's going to be independent films. And mm -hmm. these sound expensive. This one sounds expensive. This one's going to be like special, $6 million. Special effects, I, yeah. Yeah, the way I budget it. Yeah. $6 million. I can't do this one yet, yeah. All right, let's move on to suicide.com. Mm -hmm. Now, my only problem with the thing, .com seems to be dead. Twitter, suicide Twitter. Think about it. I will. Always up to date. Uh, this is a horror mystery. Emily Ann Peters is a young woman with hopes of breaking into the film industry. After growing sick of working in adult movies, she decides to produce a documentary on suicidal people. The first volunteer commits suicide on camera and starts Emily's new controversial career. After many protests and death threats, Emily finds herself by a, st a person who wants her to stop. Will Emily's own death be the end of her s series? 
This one, um, I'm actually getting kind of pushed towards, to tell you the truth. Uh, we've had a few responses. We have a meeting with a producer set up later on this month uh, about this, and we might actually start doing this one in short segments. Did the producer work for Vivid? Triple X no, movies. No. Why does she have to be a porn star? She's not a porn star, actually. I probably, I, as I'm hearing this, I realize I should have. She, she worked in the film industry. It's based on someone who I knew who actually edited porn for a while, downtime from her actual film career. She was a director, just you can't really make a lot of money until you get big. So she was editing porn for a while, and then this kind of was based out of that lifestyle. It seems like you're just throwing in porn to be gratuitous there. <laughs> Like you can throw porn in the satellite. Well, one. you know, you end up writing there what you know. There was someone from the porn industry who's now a satellite expert. <laughs> All right, here we go. Running along. Um, Midwood Rising. Political action adventure. After a series of devastating terrorist attacks, the United States implements martial law. Human rights have gone the way in the wayside in the name of national security families are torn apart by fear and suspicious neighbors turning on each other for question in midwood brooklyn an international group of mercenaries police officers former army officers and private citizens plan and stage a series of battle for their freedom and for the freedom of their loved ones midwood Rising. Yes. Uh, that should have been the name of the porn. <laughs> shit rising. No offense, but this is the exact same thing. No offense thing after as, shit rising. This is the same thing as Haven <laughs> and, and, and Suicide Dive. They're I mean, very they, different. They all Reed seem Dave. to be similar, though. There's some kind of big event, yes. and then people have to go away from somewhere, <laughs> and then they have to... Oh, and, and there's a very spooky title. There's, there's a lot some, of people on the move. Something's looming. Yes, they all have characters and three acts, too. But that's not, but, but, I mean, that's a movie, but I mean, what's with the Mad Max scenarios? I like those films. I like films like this. And this one's actually less of Mad Max, as, Max as, and it's more like a, a, a revolutionary movie, like a French I'm sure Revolution it's be quite now. popular in this country where people are still afraid of actual terroristic at, uh, attacks. Yeah, you well, gotta Brooklyn's check. gonna rise up. All right, let's uh, move back over to Polero. Mm. Polero. This is a horror film. Mm -hmm. With the nearing of 2012, or 212, like I like to rock it, many theories about the destruction of the world by religious groups and cults. One Santeria cult in Brooklyn has taken it into their own hands to help bring upon the end of times. Can two New York City cops stop them before their ritual killings bring a demonic presence into our world. In Midwood Rising 2. The exact same movie that I just described. I didn't know the NYPD had a voodoo division. Yeah, well, you know, they have a homicide division, and I'm sure that if anyone committed any kind of like... All right, let's killings. look at this. The world is going to end in 2012, or these not cases? I just don't believe that, is. actually. I, yeah. don't, I believe that the Mayans said that there was going to be an end of times and the rebirth of knowledge. It doesn't mean to me that it's going to be the destruction of the world. It means that, you know, maybe we're going to evolve a little bit mentally, con uh, consciousness-wise. All right. Um, but I'm playing with that idea. I just don't think this is a case the NYPD would pick up. <laughs> hey, uh, Matt, well, I think if, like you said, if there's ritual killings... They're going to cover it. They're not going to say these are ritual killings for a stupid reason. Matt, you're on a fez. Hey, guys, I was just wondering, aren't these all plots from the old Twilight Zone episodes? Or the Is that where you get these from, I don't uh, know. Franklin? I just recently got into the Twilight Zone, so I couldn't say. Paul in Florida, you're on a fez. Yeah, Franklin uh, just read The Stand from Stephen King and got some uh, really good ideas about a haven and how to go to uh, utopia society. I'd have to read that, too. <laughs> what I like to do is look at other science fiction and apocalypse movies and books. Then I write them down. And you know there's going to be like a big 2012 movie coming out in the next couple of weeks, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, these scripts have been written over the course of 11 years. so like, And they've stuff... got John Cusack. I don't yeah, know who know. you're getting. Yeah, this one's a little time sensitive. John Cusack's been in a lot of fucking hits, has he? <laughs> 
the thing about this script is like I'm probably going to just take the 2012 out because it's such a small part of the actual script. The the story could very well become just a very Santeria based story. It's just when I wrote it, it was about 2012. So said it in 2011. <laughs> Or in a 7-Eleven. That's not um, when the science fiction book was written. Let's go over mm -hmm. to Beyond the Mind's Horizon. Mm -hmm. It's an urban superhero story. When a program glitch allows for a secret social control satellite to shut down, groups of people around the world begin to evolve constantly, instantly. Their mental capacity grows and allows for certain people the ability to change reality by thought. Mm -hmm. These people become hunted by, uh, by a black ops group or black group <laughs> that are designed to keep this evolution stunted. The evolved seek each other out while avoiding capture and trying to find out what happened to them. Mm -hmm. This is something I've dreamt of from when I was a child because I grew up with comic books and I've always wanted to have my superheroes for real. So this is basically it's a superhero drama set in New York City. Is one of them Wolverine? No, 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 no. We try. We don't have any like obvious co uh, copies from the characters mm -hmm. that no I. No claws. Yeah, but more or less, it is that. It's a it's a X Men in in New York is mm -hmm. what it is. Malcolm X Men. <laughs> Malcolm. No, I I don't read the comic books, but uh, the first. Uh... X-Men was basically the X-Men in New York. Yeah, well, again, these were, it came out before and based on it, you know. All those comic books are based in New York. Mixed with Minority Report. Uh, here's our good buddy Rorschach. Rorschach, go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, you know, Franklin is actually kind of smart for jumping on this bandwagon because I believe the end of this year and all of next year, these post-apocalyptic style of movies like The Road is coming out in World War Z, it's kind of like a developing genre of... It's all coming together. Calamity. It's going to be perfect for mm -hmm. Franklin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Roshak. All right, guys. There you have Bye. it. It's a Rorschach rant. Thornroot. This is fantasy and sci-fi. Yes, and this one I actually wrote with my girl. With Gina? Yeah. On Two Distant Worlds. Creatures are in search of a way to stop a devastating organism that fell from the skies. They believe the other world is to blame for the devastation. Surrounded by fear and devastation, two unlikely travelers of each world find themselves entangled in a journey to end the suffering on both uh, planets. The truth reveals to them more than the cure for the thorn root. It's devastating. Shitty Avatar by Shitty James Cameron. You gotta pick every new movie that came out years They're after the... that I wrote my movie, well, Dave. But... Yeah, true, Dave. No one else <laughs> you're not even like trying, true. Dave. <laughs> well, this sounds a little bit like Use the actual uh, synopsis there. We're watch out for the plant life. <laughs> Can I give you some advice here? Mm -hmm. And I know that you'll go to Dean and you'll turn around on it. No, no. You open my what eyes if, this time. What if you shot small shorts? One scene, half a scene, a fake trailer promoting this. I think it would be more powerful than the written word. Because these guys, they hear the written word, they don't have the imagination. I think you're right, actually. you gotta, you got to spoon feed these fucking animals. We're thinking of doing a couple of those with uh, Suicide.com, just doing a couple of the, the shorts. All right, perfect. Yeah. I think you're up for that. And then if somebody was out there with money, they're like, wait a minute, this movie's already happening. I could jump in on this. I think you're on to something with this one, dude. And honestly, the more I think about them little girls running around in moose shirts, because we got moose shirts, you know. Like, I have a ton of moose merchandise on the site, but it's, you know, Who it's thought you out of it, Dean? Honestly, it was a combination of Dean and Gina who thought that the women would feel like cows in a moose shirt. And I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> it's well, then, <laughs> all, look, who cares how they feel? Your point is to get this thing up and popping. I agree you with you. ever been a can? There's naked chicks running around pushing movies mm -hmm. all the time over there. Mm -hmm. They gotta sell the sizzle. You're right. Sell the sizzle. Get That's... thorn root shirts. <laughs> I actually have a What's lot of thorn root. Which one of these you like the best, Fez? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if there's any of them that I would say put your money into. Dave, do you know? I like the one that was called um, X Files ripoff, and I believe that was Polero. 
They do the same thing to me, frankly. I know. I they say, do the sorry, same thing I'm to sorry. me. Polero X. They files. might want to look at the storyboards. They'll I get did. It. I no. I, I I watch them on science fiction X Files reruns every night at two a.m. No, the storyboards on the website. Why are you getting you? some sleep? <laughs> because I want to watch Franklin. I mean X Files episodes on you know up at Science Fiction. Channel. How many hours a night of sleep are you getting? Because I'm getting emails from little, you in the middle of the night. Very little, but I, there's there's children up. They're crying probably because they've seen Franklin scripts. They shouldn't be watching my movies. They're too young. Oh, they're not going to oh, okay. ever. No, it's not because of you don't make movies young. for kids. I really hope to actually. That's my. I mean, after I get these done, I'd really like to do children's stories. And Thorn Root is the transition into it. It's I like the only one that my niece and nephew could actually watch. Here's an idea for one of your children's stories you can make. There's this cat, mm -hmm. and he has a hat on mm -hmm. his head. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he I like that. Walks around, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. it's, he's always rhyming, and it's like a hat with a cat in it. What if we make That's a strike? Just, just, I'll write a script for you right now. Causes trouble. Let's see. Yeah. Let me just ask you this, Dave, why you're so angry. How, oh, many movies, how many movies have you made? Franklin's made movies. I have made zero movies. Thank you. As of yet. I've made as much movies as fights I, you've won. Actually, I have a script, though, <laughs> for a movie. I was thinking I could pitch if we're both going to pitch. Ahead. There's a guy in a hat, and he has a whip. And he battles the Nazis because there's something that Moses left behind. That's and Big Trouble in Little China. The other ripoff. <laughs> don't act like ripoff movies don't get made. At least they're made. But is that something to be proud of? Or, I mean, I. Yo, brother, you Franklin, think that. Franklin that, should be doing new work. You think that Indiana Jones is any different than Errol Flynn, like yes. 20 years ago? I what is wrong different. with the guy having dreams? What is the wrong with a guy just having some dreams? Because they're not Dave's dreams. They look like I nightmares yes. to me. It's just hard to pick when there's something falling from the sky in every movie. <laughs> and there's an Armageddon, and people are going to band together. Look, I <laughs> wanted to have a great show. I ended up on Ronnie Fez. People will band together, all in Brooklyn, <laughs> conveniently enough. You got to write what you know. And they're going to fucking take down this apocalyptic situation. Yes, you want to inspire people to be able to take on things larger than themselves. You don't want to fall down and cower to any fear, which you tend to do. I don't cower oh! in fear. <laughs> yeah, you do. You joke as soon as you get nervous, bro. Oh! oh! I joke because we're on a comedy show. And people don't want to be hearing about... You would be the only person who called it that. You would be the only person who ever called this a comedy show. <laughs> By the way... I I'm, call it short facts. I'm also <laughs> going to... Uh, short, I'm also going to talk to Mr. Kevin Smith... About your moo cow ripoff too. Why? What's that? Mm -hmm. Movie? Oh yeah. That's just another one. I, I'm just. I have to look out for my New Jerseyans. Yeah, he did have a cow I in that movie. Was it called, called movie? movie? It was called movie. Called movie for yeah. Christ's sake! All right, just for the record, my, you added a B. Oh, my your niece cow. named Moo when she was two. Yeah, right. She saw Dogma. <laughs> we all did. Yeah. That's a cute movie for a kid to say. Is she willing to testify in court? Yes, I think she would be, but she's not I've, 18 I've yet. I've written an email to Kevin already. Here's uh, Lady Trucker. You're on the Run of Fez show. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How about a sampling of Fred's movies on Sunday night? That's actually not a bad idea. We could take a Sunday night, we'll take one of your scripts, and we'll do it as a radio play. Dude, I would love to do that. You know, I actually talked once with Steve with the Sleeves about that, like having him narrate yeah. things. But that would be great to actually act them out. By the way, Sleeves these voiceover works and said nobody from the Ron Fez show. Oh, oh, I didn't hear about it either. Exactly. Oh. You didn't hear about it. I don't know who we learned. I'd Dr. Love to do Sne Steven Snoogans. Oh. Is all I uh, know about. We have nice voices. We like to talk. I don't know what happened with Sleeves with us. When's the last time we even got a nice little uh, Twitter song from him? Oh, not for a couple months at least. Right. Breaks, breaks my heart. Hurtful. Does it ever come up at the producers' meetings, or you just sit there? Oh, it uh, hasn't come up as of yet. I wonder why. Mm. Production doesn't come up at the producers' oh, meetings. Oh, production sometimes, but not sleeves. You're right. Mm. Um, what we could do is constantly, no matter what the sad music is, we always go back to the same Gump fucking soundtrack. Right. No matter what we're doing. We have one fucking thing, <laughs> Gump. Um, here's our good friend Tom from Madison. Tom, go ahead, buddy. Hey, buddy. First of all, Dave, you know, I'm really surprised at you with all the great inventions you've come up with that have never had a shred of any uh, plagiarism from anything. But, Absolutely not. You know, Franklin, fucking keep it up. I'm telling you, you might be hitting a foul ball. You might be hitting a strike. But you know what I'm smelling? I'm smelling the do it 
and I'm smelling the, the you know, sooner or later, you're going to swing and you're going to be going across the plate. I smell some imagination here. I don't care if it fucking sounds like something Dave or someone else might have heard. The fact is that Ronnie was right. At least you're thinking, at least you put one foot ahead of the other, and God fucking bless you. Or, sorry, God bless you for that. Because, Thank you, brother. I mean, what if we do this? What if we claim that Balloon Boy and Balloon Dad have been watching Last Exit to Brooklyn, the controversial movie Last Exit to Brooklyn? Inspired the child to get into the balloon. Yeah, just fucking anything that, that you'll take any issue at all out there and try to tie your product in with it. Honestly, I'd love to, honestly. this, Dude, I can't come here without bringing up some UFO thing. I, not even bring up Balloon Boy. What's up? So, and Lily was here last week. We're watching this Balloon Boy thing, right? I stopped the TV. I'm like, what the hell is this? There's like a, this weird round object behind the the balloon. And then a couple of days ago, so I'm like, what, does, what is this? It looks like a UFO, you know? And like, she's like, ah, no, it's not, whatever. We watch it, right? I see on YouTube, someone put the same thing up saying, what is this? What is this? And no one on the news has picked it up yet. I haven't seen it either. Let's look at it on YouTube. By the way, uh, you were getting high with, uh, with Lily at the time? Oh, I, w I would have to say no comment to that. Okay. I personally was high. Let's say that. <laughs> is anything sexually happening between you and Lily? Absolutely not. you wrote that you were cuddling. <laughs> no, 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 Has no. Has anything no. ever happened with you and your actress muse? No, no. We just have all a lot of love between us. I see. So it's a lot of hugging. A lot of hugging. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do we support. got here? What's it we called? We got the UFO with Bloom Boy. Go to Disclosed TV. Yeah, I'm sitting there and I pause this thing on CNN. I'm like, I don't know what it is. So it's... you think the UFOs got Bloom Boy to no, do this? No, I don't. Uh, like, actually, I don't know what the connection would be you know if i had to guess anything it'd be like well if there's any big thing that happened in our history you probably would see ufos because you could actually uh i don't know I mean, like if i was uh, could come back into into the time and stuff or travel through space i would want to come to all the human events that were big and be a tourist you know what i mean so this could actually end up just being hoax on top of hoax oh yeah by far in fact, from the get-go, we thought it was a hoax just because it didn't look like you a chocolate. You think a get-go was up there? <laughs> no, from the get-go. <laughs> but it didn't ever look like there would be somebody in there. All right, do you have it yet, Dave? I'm waiting for the computer to load it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought, you know, anyway. But, yeah, I was very surprised. I'm like, look at this this thing and then it was ironic that you had that interview right before about how the media jumps on things. yeah we had the mark Furman who actually people know things mm -hmm. and don't release it out because they it's more show business and then they run a thing in that they uh, by the way though in terms of stunt i thought it was absolute great oh yeah i don't know why people are acting like they're personally mad at the end of this uh you might it seems like the only thing people are disappointed in and is that a six-year-old wasn't in a balloon? Honestly, it seemed like like they they were upset. They took all that time mm -hmm. and didn't even see the the boy crash. Yeah, they wanted to see a boy get killed at the end of it. I know it's really kind of disturbing to tell you the god's honest truth. Uh, and by the way, Balloon Boy also doesn't seem to be a very pleasant young man. He almost seems like he's a mean kid, which I think has hurt people because they already project it. Balloon Boy's the sweetest kid in the world on themselves and then they see his anti-gay video and his <laughs> screaming who the hell is wolf and they're just saying well this is not a nice young man and they're all disappointed about it do they know if the parents put him up to this yet yeah it looks that way the, the charges haven't been uh, filed yet but it looks like the parents were like let's get something going for our tv show all right, we can't find this. Let's forget about this. All right, but you're <laughs> yeah. saying a I'll UFO you made uh, Bloom Boy do this. Why don't we take a break? We're uh, back in a, a couple of minutes, and uh, we'll look around. Why, you got something to spot? No, you? I'm going to look for it. Uh, yeah, we'll look for it, and we'll talk about some of your other UFO experiences. Oh, yeah. And see if people have seen any. It's the Ron Fez Show. You shaved your head for V for Vendetta. Um, did you also shave your V for Vagina? Pass. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, this is the Ron Fez Show. I've 
Are these your shades? No, those are yours. What do they look like the ones you just had on? What do we? <laughs> what do we shade? Are we shade buddies? <laughs> So. All right, uh, Franklin, uh, you're a person who you like UFOs, you like time travel. Yes. You believe that these things happen. Yes, I do believe there's a lot more to our world than we actually know. Even though you've admitted, uh, admitted to us that you hallucinate quite a bit. I, I actually have hallucinated on drugs and seen things that I can't say. I've seen things that I haven't touched. Let's right, put it that way. You've seen ghosts. I've seen ghosts. You've seen UFOs. I have seen three UFOs. Is there anything else that you've seen? No. <laughs> it's mostly the three UFOs and ghosts. What yeah. are other things that you well, believe I mean, in? I, be I believe that right now we're in, we're, in a, we're in a very important time in human history where our consciousness is evolving and that we're actually going to become aware of ways to affect our environment through our mind. There's telekinesis. A, telekinesis, being telekinetic, uh, psychic abilities. Um, down to the fact that there's actual scientists realizing now that your molecules, your cells, are affected by your thought process and, your process and the environment that you're in. There's a scientist, a molecular scientist named uh, Bruce Lipton. And Bruce Lipton, what he did was he took a cell and he took piece by piece... Every... Did he also make the tea? He did not. Okay. I thought he was related to James also, but he wasn't. Who? James. <laughs> but uh, he took... Piece by piece, the nucleus of the cell, the proteins in the cell, each part of the cell, the cell performed its function correctly still, without anything. The reason why it does is because its instructions come from cilia on the outside. The hairs on the outside of the cell, it takes in like antennas, receptors from our environment, from our brain. So you, you're in a bad mood, you're going to get sick. You live in a bad environment, you're going to so get sick. So you're one of those people that believe in the in the secret? I Well, honestly, I believe in the secret to an extent that the secret is a nice but let's take way. a person like fez and be yeah. totally honest here you think his worrying and his kind of well he always sees the glasses half filled and yeah. things are gonna fuck up you think that makes him physically sick i think that manifests in fez's body yes mm. you think he'll die from it no i think if he doesn't change his ways I will think he die fez from is it? going to realize it and he's going to control his body and but let's it. suppose he doesn't then he can't die from then it. then he yes. can die from it all yeah. right there you have it give me a date that Fez is going to be dead by. I think Fez is going to live a long time because. But he's if he doesn't change, to me. if he doesn't change, Super Bowl. Uh, well, maybe. he lived to see the Super Bowl. That's. I really don't know, quick. man. That's kind of that's 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 a long time though. I mean, stress can kill you quicker. You All right, eight six six run zero Fez eight six six run zero Fez. Do you agree with Franklin? Have you seen ghosts? This is a, a time for scary music. Why don't we go back for the Gump stuff? But do you agree with Franklin? Have you seen Ghost? Have you seen UFO? And you've also believe in time travel. There's people here from the future. I've read things that seem incredibly compelling on the idea of time travel, that people have actually been traveling for years to other planets and working and things like that. And that's... So not only are you traveling through time, you're traveling through uh, spooky music. Because this seems like some kind of a drum solo. Uh, there we go. You believe people are traveling back and forth mm -hmm. through time and space. I think space travel is probably... Is there a probably... shadow government? Is there a shadow government of reptilian shapeshifters? I think that there is uh, not so much a shadow government, but people who in have influence over our government, but not directly. Like are there aliens power. on the planet right now? Yes. Can you name one? I believe that they are definitely reptilian beings on this planet. I believe that there's probably different forms of gray beings on this planet. Um... Just, you know who I think the reptilian beings are? Mm -hmm. And this is serious? Mm -hmm. Reptiles. Mm -hmm. When I see them, I feel like they are definitely uh, not... They are definitely not of human nature. Uh, here's Justin in California. Justin, you're on Fez. Hey, buddy. Um, I don't know about this reptilian business, but uh, back, to the, uh, back to what Franklin was talking about with uh, receptors and the cilii and... Uh, cells reacting uh, with the brain in situations, uh, yeah, this is actually uh, kind of common knowledge and fairly old news in the animal science community. Um, there's been probably 20 years of data reflecting uh, those stress levels in animals and how that correlates to higher incidence of sickness or poorer weight gains in a feedlot situation and how aggressive animals uh, typically... So perform, let me uh, ask you this. Should a person have a positive attitude to stay healthy? Well, if from a scientific standpoint, uh, 
you know, like I say, we're bridging a gap between animals and humans. But, yeah, I think absolutely. I see a higher incidence of illness and less desirable performance in the stressed or aggressive cattle than I do in the uh, ones that are easier to handle and more pleasant, I guess you could say. Is Fez bringing on his own health risk? Uh, yeah, I think there. I think there's a lot of issues that Fez needs to uh, work through with his whole approach. I think he lets uh, lets everything consume him and, and get him down. And after a while, um, well, like like the, like said in risky business, sometimes Joel, you just gotta say, "What the fuck?" All right, let me just ask Fez this because it sets up an interesting thing for people in the country that if you are sick, and Fez, you've had a sick couple of years, right? How do you like hearing from someone, that's your fault? It's almost like you didn't get sick, you made yourself sick. Does that feel like an insult to you, or are you happy to hear it? No, it, it does feel like an insult. Like, I would want to have a heart attack. Or mm -hmm. like, it's almost saying, of course you're sick, you shit in your own mouth. Mm -hmm. So because you you don't have a happy-go-lucky thing... You deserve your ulcers. You deserve your stents. It's almost like... You should be wearing a wig. It's like Munchausen by proxy, except you're your own proxy. It's like I'm trying to murder well, myself. That would just be Mon Munchausen. Yeah. That's when you try to make yourself sick. But you had told me back when you first started to be depressed, you wanted to drive into a tree, go into the hospital and hurt yourself so people would feel sorry for you. R yeah. Have you kind of done that to yourself, even though unfortunately for you... You don't have the kind of friends who care. I do not think that I've done that to myself. Do you, do you feel like any of us go, oh, my God, are you okay, Fez? We check on you. Do you have anybody that does that for you? Um, I mean, no, not really. There's no one in your life who's like, hey, Fez, I just want to call you. You feeling okay? I know you're sick. No family, no friends. No. So, so this doesn't kind of pay off for that for you. Right, yeah. You're sick by yourself. Yeah, I mean, if I'm... Do you like that feeling? No, if I'm at home and I'm having, like, you know, the chest pains, the angina, yeah. that's not a good feeling, sitting mm -hmm. there by yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm I I'm not getting any sympathy from the cat. I definitely felt the anger when I first started hearing this stuff, but then I started realizing that the, when I started repelling negative from me, look what's happened in my life. You know what, what I mean? That my, haircut. My health is hugely different. I have all energy all the time. I've lost, like, 120 pounds in, like, seven months. Like... The, my stuff that doesn't is, sound good. Well, I mean, I, it, it actually feels really good. Like my 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 work is focused now. I am attracting nothing but positive people to me. I notice people who are negative don't want to be around me. Uh, well, and neither do the positive people. <laughs> but uh, are you sleeping with a lot of different women now? No, I'm sleeping with one woman. Well, that oh. doesn't help then. <laughs> and your changes haven't helped at all. Here's Newsday, Laura. Laura, hi. You're on hi, with buddy. Franklin. Yeah. And hi, Blanky. Hey, Blanky. How are you? I'm chilling. How you Blanky doing? Blanky is Blink-182-y. Blanky? Blanky? <laughs> yeah, they call each other Blanky because they get under the blankets and do awful things. <laughs> oh. No, we have the same blanket, but anyway. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, I don't believe in this, but there's uh, certain people, conspiracy, I guess, beliefs that aliens and UFOs are us from the future. Mm-hmm. Well, I always that? said, my dad told me this, and we didn't say UFO. He used to call it a Jew FO. And he would always say that it was Jews from the future coming back here to try to control the, the banks. Oh, Have you thanks. ever heard of this before, Franklin? <laughs> I've not so much the future Jews, but I've definitely heard the uh, theory that they're human beings from the future. Because if you look at how we're evolving, our pinkies keep getting smaller, our heads are getting larger, our brains are getting larger. So we could gather that you keep taking that uh evolution do you realize how slow evolution takes though yeah. you act like this is oh like no no pinkies and heads are changing from the 60s it's just not true <laughs> no i agree no, no no i agree with you in fact that is my problem for the theory of evolution that evolution just takes so long in nature that so you don't see... think there is an evolution i think that there's natural evolution and then there was helped evolution give me a give me a, a I chance think to human help beings I think what happened on Galapagos is natural evolution. Mm -hmm. I think human beings have been helped from Homo sapien to Neanderthal to Neanderthal to... Well, that's not true. They were two different strains. We were two different species. We we're definitely two different species, but they're trying to say through... Uh, well, they had been. They change about, uh, the evolution theory consistently, but they're trying to say that we evolved from all these different animals. And yeah, now they're saying that the Neanderthals and the Homo sapiens may have lived at the same time. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we were... 
you know, we didn't evolve from them. They were, you know, it's like saying a wolf and a fucking, I don't know, a dog or something. Right. I don't, I'm going to say dog because I can think of something else. <laughs> Coyote or something. I don't, know. I don't see how it helps us in the future. You're making yourself sick again by even saying it. <laughs> what? Why don't you just embrace it so you stop giving yourself ulcers and heart attacks? You're the reason why you're sick. It is not me. I am not trying to kill myself. Are you sure? Laura said it. Franklin believes it. Mm -hmm. There are books out there that say if you have a bad attitude, if you're always sad, if you're always worried, you're going to make yourself sick. Almost like you prefer hmm. being sick. You think Fez prefers being sick? Yes. Wow. And that was your buddy today. Mm-hmm. Hicks, does Fez prefer being sick? I think part of him does. He likes the attention with the sickness. I'm not even sure about attention. It's just a way t that's what he knows. I'm not saying that he's selfish, but about it like he will needs everyone to be he just doesn't attention. know another way to be the right. attention i w i would want wouldn't be a catheter up the groin why not i thought that was a lifestyle choice <laughs> because that is frightening and i cry on the going in there that's be there you go you're constantly crying you're constantly complaining you're constantly angry you're constantly afraid. Are any of these good emotions, uh, Franklin? No, I would say they're very detrimental to both. Does yes. he deserve what he gets? No. But here he's yes. had the time, right? Fez has had the time. You've been exposed to all these other things. Mm -hmm. Philosophies, spiritualities, things that you could do. Why aren't they taken? Nothing has just caught on yet. Caught on to what? It's you the one that's doing it. Inside my brain. Inside your brain is up to you. It's not like something's blowing by and sticks to your head. It, uh, that's do you a, see what I'm saying That's there? the best sentence I've heard in a while. Because inside, your, your whole environment is up to you. Everything that's in your head is your control. No one can do anything to you that you won't choose to react what to. What about the cops? Well, they can fuck physically the do fuck something the to you. They How's can that? Do... That's Franklin's favorite song growing up. God, yeah, I fuck love the that police. song. Fuck, fuck them hard. Do you know that I was arrested with my entire production crew the day they shot Diallo? You should have seen the fucking scene that I put up in there to the point where other cops were applauding for me. They had to let us go. They had to actually open Why the cell. Why were you going crazy? Dude, because they arrested us for filming without a per permit, kept us there all freaking night. The night that they had uh, quitted the Diallo, I mean, not the night he was shot, the night they quitted him. So I'm sitting here thinking... You have let out these people who shot this man 41 times, and I am... 41 shots by 41 shots. Okay, hey, baby. And I am in jail with my entire production crew. 41 shots? <laughs> Just looking at you, you know? Oh, craziest fucking day of my life. How, how do we even get into the album? I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm well, so he came, well, I believe he came from the future. <laughs> he had a without, wacky day, too. <laughs> did he bring on that heat on himself, though? Did his bad vibe bring that on well, from the police? Well, you see, here's the thing. There's also your mind, but there's also your environment. You know what I mean? And then here's the thing. You're t everything we're taught from a child has taught us a certain way to live and a certain way to think. So you can't really blame the individual for not believing that they can alter their their, their environment. You just got to teach them. Let's do this, though. Uh, you take Fez's family. Yeah. Uh, you've got, what, four people in your family. They're not mm -hmm. like you. They've all had the same parents, so mm -hmm. the same genetic background, mm -hmm. and the same environment. Why are they four really different people? I would say that the environment that, Fre that Fez has pulled himself towards are different than his, his brothers and sisters. I'm sure you guys didn't grow up in exact same social environments, did you? I mean, uh, yeah, I would yeah, think same so. Friends, None of them same had interests. friends. No, no. I mean, we were in the same neighborhood all my life. So, I mean, there wasn't like. Neighborhood or gayborhood? Were they neighborhood. In, <laughs> were they into theater? <laughs> No. What about That's this song? Dip, Did you used to sing this? Who blows the people in your gayborhood? <laughs> in your gayborhood. The mailman. As you said at an early age, you learned about penis blowjobs. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I did. I said that, Ron. Is that Franklin? Right after we were arrested for Abdu Diallo and the travesty that went on. That's he's always fucking surrounding right. Right, because all you think about is those. he's talking jokes about me sucking those, dick and he's the, the one tasting cum. Those In reality, people, oh! those people shot that man forty-one times. <laughs> yeah, but Franklin had a really bad day. He wouldn't just. Sit Why are you quietly. against Franklin now? 
He's saying I'm trying to murder myself. Well, he's saying, <laughs> no, he didn't say it. Also, the genetic scientist <clears throat> said that. Said that you are killing yourself. I just feel like when I've realized this information, I've seen changes in my life, so I felt like I have options. And I feel like every day, I convince myself that I can control another part of my life, and I see it happen. So, and I've seen in other people's lives. You know, like, I'll use Lily, for example. Lily, I've seen her life go straight up from the time that she decided that she can control her life. I when saw did her she decide? Bring, she decided around April. That's when you gave her the secret? No, that's what she brought. The, she actually ended up bringing the secret to me because I was going through all this stuff. And then she goes, this sounds like the secret. And I had no idea what the secret was. And then she found this Oprah clip because clip, clip, she's all Oprah crazy, you know? I know that. And uh, so I'm watching this thing and I'm like, well, this sounds like what I'm going through in my life. Then I started to, after a while watching it, I was like, all right, well, this is a little fluff because I was kind of into more the molecular science behind it. But I think it's a great way to introduce people to the concept of controlling your own environment. The secret. It's a secret. <laughs> so that's what, and now you and Lily have turned your lives around. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're in control of our lives. And you weren't before. I wasn't. I was spiraling. When you guys knew me, I was spiraling. I couldn't control this. Yeah, you daily. I was spiraling. Person. And you can see how focused I am these days. Mm -mm. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> all right, maybe it's really No, you went off on I a dial uh, Diallo <laughs> tangent. I still yeah, see a spiral. actually flew, actually. I still see a spiral. <laughs> I didn't realize how much uh, anger I had sitting down there. So you're saying Lily's bringing a lot of great new men into her life. Uh, I'd say a lot of great new experiences, not a lot of great new men. Mm. Yeah. So one man, but a lot of different sexual yeah, yeah. experiences. She's like, hmm. <laughs> Let's put it that way, yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> now, have you met wrong. this guy? No, no. But I hear a lot about him. What's he doing that's so great for her, sexually? Making her smile. What is he <laughs> doing that, 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 let's say, Hicks can't do? He, yo. <laughs> that I he fucks I, her in the ass, yeah. and then he comes. Is that it? In, in her no, ear, I really and he goes. Know. His, 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 that's really none of our business. Yeah. That's where I would that. go with that and one. Hicks can't do that. <laughs> he comes in her ear just... and says, "Here's a little ear pudding for you, darling." Yeah, that's not gonna get them hot, Dave. Don't Here it is, me. darling. Ear pudding. Don't do it. They don't like germs like that. D I'm really uncomfortable with two grown men fucking <laughs> just sitting here whispering to each other. <laughs> Tell me about the UFOs that you saw. Oh, they, they, man. they warn you about Fez's All right. problems. The first one I got, I'm going to tell you, honestly, the first one, I was coming home from Limelight. I was working out there back then. So I was definitely in altered states, all right? But I definitely saw this, but I want to be honest about when I'm not sober. I at the bus stop at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I see this big blue ball just fly across Coney Island Avenue and, and Foster Avenue, just fly. And then I'm thinking, oh, it's a freaking shooting star, and it changed direction. It's like, oh, all right, I won't tell anybody about this. So I never told anyone about this for years. Then on, this is a little odd, because people get angry when I say this, but on the morning hours uh, before September 11th, Dean and I were coming back from Manhattan, and we stopped on Ocean Parkway. And uh, we were hanging out there, just talking about life. Just nothing. We had no idea what was going to happen. Just you know? in, touching each other. Yeah, well, you know, we had no idea what was going to happen the next day. So like, we're just talking, mm -hmm. and I'm and getting distracting. <laughs> nice. And I feel all this electricity on me, right? You know, from, maybe from Dean, but I feel all this electricity on me, and I'm like, whoa. And I'm getting. He's like, yo, why are you so distracted? You know. And I look up, and we see a cone-shaped object on fire and uh, fire in the sky. But on fire that was specifically green and pink, pink and green fire. So I'm assuming it's some kind of chemical. And it was just flying through the sky, burning, and then it exploded into seven pieces and started falling to the floor. And I would have thought it was just me and Dean being crazy until I saw people walking their dogs, stopping, looking in the air. And then we come home and immediately, uh, I think it was John Rowland on Fox 5 News is uh, reporting was about to report uh, the story. They put a hand into the thing, give him a paper, and they say a Russian uh, rocket It was uh, seen over the East Coast. Now, I go to bed, and I get a call back at 8 o'clock with Dean telling me, turn on the, any channel. And obviously, we know the rest of the history. Do you that think that the two things were connected? I can't help but believe they're connected. It's just too ironic for me, you know? like You never believe in the 9-11 the being just terrorists. 
No. There's something else. What, what happened on that day? Frankly? I think there's too much scientific evidence that there were the same exact materials found in, in, the, in the building that were used in demolition. The same exact materials. That I, I wish I could remember the name of this. The same thing that he used to, to, to flash cut Mm -hmm. the iron and to make all the molten lava i mean the molten iron happen now that any of the investigators from the new york fire department agree with you yes okay M in fact majority of the of, of firefighters this is the first this. i'm hearing about this. there are tons of information there's actual i've seen it on actual fox news finally where they finally start talking about all these little pellets i cannot remember the name of anyone in the audience knows the name of this material cannot have happened naturally so you believe the russians were behind this i believe that it was rockets. a demolition a demolition job i don't know who was behind it now, but it was what a demolition about the job. fact that we saw uh planes flying we saw buildings. them but we've never in the history of man seen a building go down of that size from fire and we know and science well, they, gave, not, they gave the explanation how yes. they said the thing melted and the building was always supposed to fall that way yeah you don't believe them no because of, they, because of the fact that they found... I, I believed it that day. Who was behind the 9-11 attacks? I wouldn't know. If you had to guess. Let's suppose we were having a bet. Everybody could make money. If I had to guess, I would say it was like a Rammstein. Is that how you pronounce that? Rammstein, a German band. Yeah. No, no, no. no. The, yeah. the, the night of... Do. Basically, Do I would say whoever had a bill that needed to be passed to get more government control mm -hmm. would benefit from that. But now here's the deal. They've already lost their government control within a couple of years. So mm. what could it do you to kill all those uh, Americans? I can't even... Be, I would never want to understand that kind of mind who would who would risk that... Who would sacrifice 3,000 people. Oh, I'm just catching on. You met Rumsfeld? The Rammstein? The, the, the German did the... Uh, the Germany... Hitler did the uh, burning of this thing, blamed it on the Jews in order to... to I see. You know what I'm talking about? I can't remember the name. Night of... A, Glass, I think it Crystal is. Uh, Crystal Kyle, Mother. you're on Run Fez. Hi, the name of the material is Thermite. Thermite, thank you. I'm convinced. Look up Thermite, dude. It's John convinced. in Massachusetts. You're on Run Fez. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hello. Good. Uh, I just heard one of you guys just saying uh, you didn't know the materials uh, that they found is almost just like the explosives. Uh, it's called hydrocornite, I believe. I'm not 100 percent, but I'm almost, you know, I'm pretty much there. That that's what that is because I've seen a few videos about it. Here's Justin in New York, young man, Fez. Franklin, you're a fucking idiot. It's, it's nanothermite and it's fucking bullshit. That so is the name of it, nanothermite, and I'm an idiot it's because I looked bullshit. it up, right? So it's 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 not. There. So is it my lack of knowledge of the term or my belief that it was not a accident? The belief is bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. So because, because you don't disagree, you because you disagree it's not with me. You don't disagree. It's junk fucking science. Is this guy Stephen Jones? has been coming out with these papers saying it's different types of thermite, different types of thermite. Every time it's proven wrong, he, find, he thinks he finds some other little piece of shit. Uh, that... Let me, let me uh, ask Franklin something. Mm. Franklin, I remember on election night you were crying, you were yes, sobbing. Yes, I was very proud. Uh, because we've got a black president. Well, because I was more touched by the people who were like-minded with myself. Oh, let me ask yeah. you this then. Mm -hmm. Here are the men who brought change. Mm -hmm. um, you call them Messiah? You call him the messenger of truth. Mm. Why hasn't he come around to your way of thinking? Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he expose this nine eleven? There's thing? way too much things to be done right so now. He can't do anything about. I it. mean, if you think about it, Charlie Sheen just did this whole letter to him. You know that he got all this flack for. I mean, people. There's not. I'm not the only. You don't. You're not a conspiracy theorist. No, there's anymore. other nuts. There's a lot of people who believe it who are just regular people. Um, you think Charlie Sheen is a regular guy? No, it's Charlie Sheen. Well, it's not extreme. so much the regular people that I'm listening to; it's <laughs> the experts. I'm just not hearing experts uh, that are agreeing with you. You're definitely not getting it in the main mainstream. But there's, if you actually search any videos for this, you'll find papers, you'll find videos, you'll find actual mainstream small news clips of of these. Yes, findings. YouTube and the internet's filled with this kind of shit, mm -hmm. but I don't see anybody. Uh, of any respect other than like you said mm -hmm. the guy who did wall street uh